my channel. Today I have a really exciting DIY for you, which is perfect for the holidays. So you guys know the company Simplicity, right? They're most known for their sewing patterns. Well, Simplicity has sent me some great supplies to turn this adorable apron into a Mrs. Claus apron. But where do you get that apron, Karen? I can already hear you asking. Well, I actually made it based on the It's So Easy Simplicity sewing pattern, and I'm showing you how to make it step by step in a video that's up now over on the Simplicity YouTube channel. But today, in this video, I'm going to show you how to take it to the next level and turn it into this adorable Mrs. Claus apron. We'll be attaching some faux fur trim, some large gold buttons, a Santa belt, and some felt snowflakes, which I actually made out of another Simplicity pattern, but more on that in a sec. So we're gonna start with this faux fur trim, which, surprise, is also from Simplicity. Faux fur trim is actually one of my favorite supplies to use over the holidays because it just makes anything feel so cozy. A really quick DIY is to use it to upgrade a plain stocking like I showed you in a video from last year. Pro tip though, have a lint roller on hand because once you start cutting the faux fur, it kinda gets everywhere. Okay, but back to the apron. I'm just gonna cut off one piece of faux fur to attach here on the top of the bib. If the apron was a little more simple, I might put it on the bottom as well, but with all of the ruffles, I think it might just be a little bit too much down there. So the next thing I'll be adding are these three decorative gold and black buttons. I've had these for ages, but you can get similar ones at the craft store. Our third element will be the black Santa belt. For this, I'm using a large large piece of black felt, and I actually grabbed the waistband piece from the apron pattern so that the belt I make will fit perfectly over the existing waistband. I just pinned and cut out the pattern piece as usual, and then I pinned the two long edges of the belt about a half inch in. I switched the thread in my sewing machine to black, and then I just sewed down those two lines. Of course, if you don't have a sewing machine, you could hand sew it or use fabric glue, but I just like the extra decorative element that the two lines from the sewing machine add to the belt. So next, we're going to make the belt buckle, and I'm going to be using a piece of yellow felt for this. I'm just using a fabric marker to draw a belt buckle shape, leaving enough space on each side to be able to fold over and hem the edges. The black fabric marker actually ended up showing through the felt, so for the final version, I redid it in chalk, but it's kind of easier to see on camera if I show you the version with the marker. I decided to hand sew this piece because it's a little small to put through the sewing machine, but it didn't take very long, and I think having those folded over finished edges looks so much better than just cutting out the felt and leaving it. So moving on to the snowflakes, I'm actually going to be using Simplicity Pattern 1027, which has a whole bunch of different flower designs that you can make out of felt. Patterns like these are perfect for absolute sewing beginners because you don't need a sewing machine, and you can get used to how to read a pattern without trying to fit a large garment to your body. The simplicity patterns are great because they provide all the content you need. Pattern pieces that fit together, a list of supplies and materials, and easy step-by-step -step instructions. Plus, even when you're working with a pattern, you can still feel free to customize it. On the front of the package, they have the snowflakes as decorations on a Christmas stocking, but I'm actually going to be turning them into a pin that can be taken off the apron and worn on any clothing I like. So, looking at the instructions, the first thing I need to do is find pattern piece number 18. Once I've found that, I can just cut it out and pin it to a piece of white felt. Now is the slightly tricky part, which is cutting out the pattern pieces. These are a little more detailed than any of the pieces for the apron, but if you take your time, it's not actually that hard. Just make sure to remember to cut out the inside shapes as well. So you're going to want three of those shapes for each snowflake, and now take one of the pieces and fold it in half the long way. If you want to, you can transfer these two dots from the pattern because that's where we'll be sewing, but it's such a small piece, I think I can just eyeball it. So you're going to sew a small stitch right over the edge there so that when you tie off your thread, the snowflake has a bit of dimension to it. Do that on the other side as well and then repeat it on the other pieces. Once you've finished all three of them, keep them folded in half lengthwise and stack them right on top 
top of each other, making sure that they're perfectly lined up. Then just sew straight across the center of the stack to attach them all together. Once you've tied off that thread, you can spread it open to see your snowflake. And then to keep the petals perfectly spread out, just sew a small stitch where each of them meet. So once you're done, you should have stitches in all of these spots to make an adorable looking 3D felt snowflake. Now you can decorate it however you like. I decided to sew on a few white beads as an embellishment. So now that all of our pieces are made, it's time to attach them to the apron. I started with the faux fur trim and I just quickly hand stitched it onto the top of the apron, making sure to fold the edges around the back of the bib. I decided to hand stitch it because I didn't want the faux fur getting tangled in the sewing machine. And if I ever decide I want to remove it, it's easy to just pull out the thread. So once that was on there, I gave it a little haircut where it was folded around the back of the apron. And then it was time to move on to the buttons. There's not a whole lot to say here. If you don't already know how to sew on a button, there are probably about a thousand other tutorials already out there for you. So moving on to the belt, I used some fabric glue to attach the belt buckle to the very center of the belt. And then I put on the apron so that I could pin the belt in place right over the waistband. And then once again, I just sewed it on by hand so that if I ever wanted to remove it, I could just pull out the thread and it comes right off. And then finally, to attach the snowflakes, I just sewed a large safety pin onto the back. This will let me pin it onto the apron, but also easily remove it just in case I want to decorate any other Christmassy clothing I might own. I actually made two of the snowflakes, and then I pinned them on either side of the belt buckle, just as a finishing touch. And that's all there is to it. I think these embellishments made this apron even cuter. And of course, you can make similar embellishments on any apron that you already own. I think I'm all ready to go bake some cookies and throw a holiday party. So let me know in the comments, which holiday tradition are you most looking forward to? Is it baking cookies? Is it opening presents? Is it decorating your tree. I just, I love them all. So I want to give a huge thank you to Simplicity for sponsoring this video. It's such a fun project to get you in the holiday spirit. Remember that if you want to learn how to make this exact apron, it's the It's So Easy apron from Simplicity. And I have a video up on their channel right here showing you step by step how to make it. I'm so excited to finally have a sewing machine to make projects like these. I can't wait to make even more clothes for myself in the future. And of course, teach you guys how to make them too. Happy holidays and I will see you guys soon with another video. Bye everyone!